Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have a frequency counter and I actually have this one for years and years and somehow I forgot about it and it ended up in a box and I must say I did not use it a lot but I still find it on eBay and it seems to be very popular and uh, this one is the Victor VC3165 but it is also sold as a Felaman and DVM13 MFC2 or as an uh, Actacom or as an Actaki that is all in Eastern Europe I think and then the type number is uh, AFC 2125 and I even saw it as a Tech Power TP3165 and uh, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other brands this is very popular for a rebrand uh, it should go up to 2.4 GHz which is not bad at all uh, it has a crystal oscillator, but they kind of built their own uh, oven around it. So it should be a reasonable stable. It has uh, eight digits. And uh, oh, let's just do a few tests before we open it. Well, yeah. As you can see, I have not used it a lot. The, the feet is retractable. And, uh, but it is quite high on the lowest position uh, but you can set it even higher and then it's very very high I would have preferred if there was some setting in between maybe just like this but there is not uh, A input up to 50 MHz B input up to 2.4 GHz starting from around 5 but uh, usually below is also possible. The gate time instead of having uh, just uh, 0.11 and 10 seconds, you just have a pot which does more or less exactly that. And uh, you can see now it's very fast. And now the time is a bit longer. So you need to play a little bit to see how many digits you have. There is an attenuator 20 times and an ACDC setting a function confirm and a period and a reset they uh, somehow it can lock itself and then you need to reset it they say in the manual okay power switchable from 110 to 250 it is a switch to 250 of course yeah and uh, let's put some signal in it and if you are a starter this could be a nice uh, machine uh, it doesn't have external reference but depends on what you do with it I think they start around 85 depending if you live, live in Europe it will add some VAT with it then you end up usually around 100 and for 100 euros or up to 2.4 gigahertz if it can do that it's probably not a bad machine so but uh, I will first just put 10 megahertz and I will put in the A input and I don't see an option for A and B input so let me just put it on the B well apparently the B it starts from 50 megahertz but it can see the 10 Let's add some digits right there well, on the longest gate time we cannot get more digits than this on the B port well that makes sense because the frequency is made for, for being higher here so how do we get this A port working because yeah sometimes it's just more easy to have a A B button but they decided to do this with functions so we have function 1 that is the default what we have right uh, now then it is for the high frequency and it's actually port B then there is also a function 2 if I understand correct here yeah there is also a function 2 and function 2 works on the force on the A port so function 2 now it should be listening to the A port and it does and there is also an function 3 and function 3 does the same but then they have a 
a low pass filter and then the higher frequency are cut off all above 2 MHz. So it's the other way around. But now, if we put it on the maximum, which is 10 seconds, now we should see a lot more zeros. Because the, then it is designed up to 50, so probably we have the one here, and then we have all the zeros there. Well, also here we don't get all the digits, I wanted one extra. So then I'm going to put it to the, to the setting 3. And then it should actually have a cutoff at 2 MHz. But uh, I found out already that it did work, so go to 3, confirm. Then we wait again. Okay, I look at that. That is not even that bad if we are in 10 MHz. Here we are just really in the 50 edge, so it's just a, a little bit off. Well, it, of course it is a little bit off because it doesn't have external reference. I just switched it on. So, and maybe we can adjust it even a little bit. So that is for the lower frequency. Now I like to see how high it can go, so we put it again back to function 1. It would have been so much more easy with an A and B button and just a filter button. But okay. Um, let me put my WBSG one. And it is now in. 50 megahertz, I think it goes up to 200 with channel 1. So that's it, display 50. This is also connected to external reference. Well, it does display. And again, here it's probably the same 50 hertz uh, off. Well, now we have a lot of digits again, and we see it is again a, li a little bit off. So maybe I can uh, adjust that later. And um, well, I just start with uh, 100 megahertz. I need to have another cable for that. Yes, to go to my other channel. Uh, let me see, I'm not using it that much. Okay, channel 2, 190 megahertz. Yeah. Okay, it seems to do that, but well, it should go way higher, so let's just see. I can um, go to 500, 500 megahertz. And I'm here on 0 dB, and I'm even using a Terminator, so the level, well, it's pretty much a few volts still. Uh, what is the sensitivity? I think it's like 200, no, 25 millivolts or something. No, 250 millivolts RMS. Okay. Yeah, and 80 millivolts on the on the higher range, which which makes sense because usually you measure around 50. Okay, 500 seems to work. Let's go to a thousand. It doesn't work, so we are already halfway. Not bad at all. Let's go to uh, 1500. Ah, let's go to uh, 1800. It is still counting still works. Still a little bit off, maybe we can adjust that. It missed a few counts, I see. Ah, there it is. Okay, we should be able to do 2.4, so let's go to 2.4 gigs. It's doing 2.4. So it does do the high frequencies in this plastic box. Let's try a little bit more. Does it do 25? I will go a little bit faster. 
Yes, it does. 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. Now, 2.7, it starts to miss counts. <laughs> so then the sensitivity really drops and then it is missing. So, 2.6, doing that. So the 2.4 is not a lie. Okay, that was nice. Just uh, now we're going to open it. Okay, well, there are a few screws in the bottom, uh, but there are only two for big ones. The small ones we can just leave in there because that is for the feet. So uh, I'm only gonna do the bigger ones. Okay, now we took out the big ones. We open. It is the, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, it's open. I think here yeah. we have this little can. This is probably the oven. It's a little bit warm. We can adjust here with a little capacitor. A little capacitor trimmer right here. So I'm not sure on what frequency it's running. I hope if it is 10, we will again be able to. Uh, to make external reference, there is enough space. We can make a hole here, put the BNC, connect it here, maybe with the switch, and we can switch it over. Uh, let me see if I can find what the frequency it is running. Well, let me just get my oscilloscope, and we're just gonna probe a little bit. Well, if you are uh, want to build external reference, it looks to be like it is uh, running on 12 megahertz and not on 10. If I measure here on my oscilloscope, it's at uh, 11.9991, so almost 12. Oh, it was a little bit off, and it was a little bit high, so that means the clock is a little bit low because then it can do more counts in the cycle. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. This one is also connected to external reference. Okay, let me just try to adjust this. It is now too fast because it is counting uh, too low. I should have used an active probe because this one is also uh, a few picofarads. And it will bring a load also on the oscillator. Yes, here we go, nearly there. Okay, this is as good as I can get it, and that is uh, 2 hertz off, and that is a lot better than it was because it was 50 hertz off. And that is on the 10 megahertz, so let's go to the 150 function 1, and here we are on 150 megahertz. Well, usually you adjust the last digits here, but look at this. This is uh, as good as we can get it without external reference. So and now it's measuring the frequency, but you can also measure the period, and that is in milliseconds. So here it would be a micro, 100 micro, and back to frequency. So that was very quick. Uh, it is very well to to adjust. Only that last two hertz is difficult because the the trim pot is really doing a lot of. Uh, big jumps when you adjust. Maybe by putting parallel a little capacitor it's easier to adjust. And uh, But it, it seems to be very stable. I, maybe if you want to use external reference you can do that, but then you probably need something like this uh, PLL here. I will leave it also in the link. 
my PLL here runs on external reference and I can just do from a few kilohertz up to 200 megahertz or even higher and uh, all linked to external reference so then I can can do the I can do even 12 megahertz because this one turns out to run on 12 what, for what I've seen right now. I did here and I've seen other videos that this product has a little bit of a, a problem with the quality control and it doesn't matter too much which brand it is because they probably just put another sticker on the front and I could see the same here so I will shut it down and open it and it's always on the input circuit. And sometimes even components are shorter there or it is just uh, open and, and I have the same problem only here nothing was shorted everything just works but uh, this input circuit here I'll open it and zoom in a little bit and show you what I mean well if we look here at the input circuit here this of course this need to be closed and uh, this is easy to solve and here it is sort of soldered but it should be completely closed of course this this is now here open and then if you have a lot of RF around you could measure the wrong uh, signals this one was also open but I managed to push this close because it was open like this and it's just not properly soldered so and some people have even noticed that some of these resistors sometimes are stuck between the cover and then of course you have a short and then you will not measure anything um, so but that's the only problem I know about uh, these and the rest I think for your money you get a proper device it measures up to very high frequencies so that was it very quick quick look inside quick test it does meet the spec, uh, specifications uh, yeah it's the Victor VC3165 sold and then many other brands uh, if you ask me are you super impressed by it no not necessarily doesn't have external reference uh, I, I find that the function is weird that you need to choose between 1 2 and 3 instead of channel A and B and filter on and off but still you get a lot for what you pay because it is below 100 euros and you get the frequency counter that goes very low can even do period measurements and it goes way up to 2.4 uh, gigahertz and we have seen it can even manage up to 2.6 so very nice thank you for watching hope to see you next time